The question of whether the tragic events of 9-11 could have been prevented is a complex and deeply debated topic. To understand this, we need to consider various factors, including intelligence warnings, government actions, and the challenges of predicting and preventing such attacks. Background of the 9-11 attacks on the September 11, 2001, a series of coordinated terrorist attacks were carried out by the extremist group Al-Qaeda. 19 terrorists hijacked four commercial airplanes, crashing two into the World Trade Center towers in New York City, one into the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, and another after passengers attempted to regain control into a field in Pennsylvania. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives, making it one of the deadliest terrorist attacks in history. Could the attacks have been prevented? The question of prevention revolves around several key aspects. One, intelligence warnings. Before 9-11, there were multiple warnings from various intelligence agencies about the possibility of an attack by Al-Qaeda on U.S. soil. For example, the CIA had information about potential threats from Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and there were warnings about hijackings and attacks using airplanes. One specific example is the presidential daily brief from August 6, 2001, titled Bin Laden Determined to Strike in U.S. This document mentioned the possibility of hijackings, but it didn't include specific details about the date, time, or location of the attacks. Challenge. Despite these warnings, the information was often vague and it was difficult for intelligence agencies to piece together the exact plans of the terrorists. The U.S. government receives thousands of threats, and not all of them are credible or specific. This made it hard to prioritize which threats to act on. Two, government response. The U.S. government and its agencies, like the FBI and CIA, had some knowledge of Al-Qaeda's activities, but there were significant communication and coordination gaps between agencies. For example, the CIA knew that some of the hijackers were in the U.S., but this information was not shared with the FBI in time. Challenge, the lack of coordination between intelligence agencies was a major issue. Different agencies were not always sharing information effectively, which meant that critical pieces of the puzzle were not put together in time. Three, airport security. Before 9-11, airport security was much less stringent than it is today. The terrorists were able to smuggle box cutters and knives onto the planes, which they used to hijack the aircraft. Challenge. The security measures at that time were not designed to prevent this type of coordinated hijacking, especially by people willing to die for their cause. The idea of using planes as weapons was not something that had been seriously considered as a likely threat. Post 9-11 changes. After the attacks, the U.S. government made significant changes to improve national security. Creation of the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. This new department was established to coordinate efforts to protect the U.S. from terrorist attacks and respond to emergencies. Reforms in intelligence sharing. There were reforms to improve communication and coordination between intelligence agencies, including the creation of the Director of National Intelligence, DNI to oversee all intelligence activities. Enhanced airport security. The Transportation Security Administration, TSA, was created and airport security was significantly tightened, including stricter screening of passengers and luggage. Conclusion. In hindsight, there were warning signs and missed opportunities that might have helped prevent the 9-11 attacks. However, the combination of vague intelligence, communication failures, and inadequate security measures made it extremely challenging to prevent the attacks. The tragedy of 9-11 led to sweeping changes in U.S. national security aimed at preventing similar attacks in the future. While it's difficult to say with certainty whether the attacks could have been entirely prevented, understanding the factors that contributed to the failure to stop them has been crucial in shaping how countries now approach counterterrorism and security. If you've gained anything from this video, then don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the No Aim, No Gain YouTube channel. For every video is a step closer to your goals. Why not also support us on Patreon so that you get unlimited and exclusive access? Link in the description box below.